Good morning, this is Steve Hoffaker. Welcome to another one in our series of uh, free professional education webinars. We do these every five to six weeks or so. Uh, this morning we have Elaine Dickinson with us who is working with a company out of Turkey. Uh, she's joining us today from the UK. She gets around uh, and she's gonna be talking about a system that I know many of you are interested in and that's monitoring the home environment uh, in an obtrusive way. So Elaine and your technology, uh, kick it off. We're looking forward to your program. All right, well, thank you. Uh, so first of all, I wanna say thank you very much, Steve, for having me here today. Uh, and all of you for taking time out of your day to come here and listen to what I, what I have to say. I appreciate that. Where is that? Um, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, again, thank you. This is a great opportunity for me to uh, get to meet some of you in the Aging Place Specialist community and also to share a little bit with you about what Larry is, a home monitoring system. Uh, Going to share some more information with you and how I hope uh, it can help those who want to age in place and live independently. Uh, so yeah, just a quick background about myself. Um, so I am from Kansas City, but as Steve mentioned, I live in Istanbul, Turkey, uh, a little bit far from home, and I'm actually in London right now visiting some friends, so a little bit all over the place. Uh, I've been an English teacher for about 15 years now and working with Larry for, it's been over a year now. Uh, it's kind of random. I personally came on board when I was asked to help with the recording for the, the commercial, for the voice for the commercial. So you'll be hearing some of my voice in uh, little parts of the commercial soon enough. So sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, I got to talking to the founder and the creative mind behind Larry, uh, our founder Alp, when I was doing the commercial. And so here I am with you uh, a year and a half later presenting this product to you. So normally, like sales, marketing, these kinds of things, it's not really um, something that appeals to me, but talking to Alp about this product um, there was something that really spoke to me, something that I felt like this is a product I can get behind and really believe in uh, as I try and present it to other people. Uh, I suppose because this is a product which it's meant to help older people aging in place. And I think that all of us can relate on some level to this concept at some point in our life, uh, whether through ourselves, through loved ones, um, I had personally just lost my father to Alzheimer's a few months before I met Alp and the Larry team. And my mother had been his primary caregiver and suddenly she was on her own. So the reality of this stage of life was just really fresh and, and real to me suddenly at that point in my life. Um, so yeah, I think, I think those things set up me becoming part of this, this team. And I, I, this really is a product that I, I feel like I believe in, and I think it can be helpful, uh, to, to people. One day I do hope to set it up in my own mother's home, but I'll admit she's quite stubborn. So that's, that will be in the future. I'll have to frame it in some way that she's, she's helping me by, uh, doing a demo for it, for testing it. Uh, okay, so that said, a little bit about myself. Now let's get on to the product and a little bit about uh, what this is. And first of all, I'd like to start with this quote uh, from, well, very wise words from a very wise man. I think we can all agree. <laughs> you know him, I know. This is a, a quote by Steve. Oh, sorry, I'm having a little trouble. Oh, just a moment. I have a, there we go. I just need to move the photos out of the way so I can see it properly. Sorry about that. Okay, so this is a quote by Steve. Uh, Often we hear people discussing or referring to aging in place as if it is an action that is completed and then set aside and not addressed again. However, aging in place is not an event like graduation or getting a driver's license or promotion. It is ongoing. Uh, and I think this, this, it's ongoing. This is very important. 
And one of the founding principles or purposes of Larry is in fact to help this ongoing purpose, to help people who want to remain independent for as long as they can, uh, while also ensuring their safety and the peace of mind of their loved ones. And so this is something which we aim to help uh, with the Larry product. So according to one study, uh, nearly two thirds of adults would like to age in place, while unfortunately only one third think that it will be a realistic option for them. Of course, other stu studies, and I'm sure you've seen many other studies put these numbers quite differently and as high as 90% who would like to stay in place. But unfortunately, as I mentioned, many don't believe that that's a possibility. And again, this is something which we hope to change by making it more possible for more individuals. So continuing a little bit with uh, what Steve said, sometimes aging in place is quite subtle to a point of hardly noticing anything specific about it. And other times it can be more dramatic and pronounced with definite uh, adjustments or modifications that are required or implemented to assist us in remaining in our homes. So as Steve mentioned here, sometimes adjustments or modifications, these are required to assist people remaining in their homes, as I'm sure that all of you are aware uh, and perhaps have more experience uh, than me with um, in your lines of work. So luckily today, in today's time, we do have many different modifications that are available. And there's a lot of technology that can help people, as you all know. Uh, we do, of course, have emergency buttons to call for help. Uh, we've got wearables to track routines and cameras which can be placed around the home to keep an eye on our loved ones. And of course, all of these have significant benefits. Um, they all offer great opportunities to people and we can use them for a lot of different purposes. However, uh, they may not be right, the right choice for everyone. So of course, um, most of the products on the market, they consist of emergency buttons. Um, these don't work if someone falls and becomes unconscious and they're not able to press the button. And of course, not everyone wants to wear them. Uh, of those that do own an emergency button, only about one in five do wear them every day. So we do have, while they do offer a lot of opportunities and they can help a lot of people, they don't work for all situations. They only detect hard falls, the person's able to press the button uh, and don't always work with unexpected immobility. And of course, with smartwatches, these can tell us a variety of things. We can learn a lot of information from them, but they may lack the focus on home and elderly. They only detect hard falls. Uh, they do require charging. They require people remembering to put them on or being willing to put them on. Uh, they don't work with unexpected immobility all the time. And cameras, of course, these can be great. You can really get have an eye of what's going on. But of course, there are privacy concerns with such things. So they don't detect hard falls uh, or they don't detect all falls. There's privacy concerns. They don't always cover the whole house, depending on where you have the cameras are. And of course, these can be quite pricey as well. So we have Larry. This is a wellness tracking technology that works with smart sensors and at-home data for people living alone. This works as an alternative to those other options. Um, they work for people who don't want to lose their privacy. Uh, they don't want to wear something. There are no cameras involved in Larry and there are no wearables. So again, those do offer a variety of benefits but they may not work for everyone. So that's where we hope that Larry can come in. All right, so we're setting up the company on a mission to improve lives through unique data and technology system. And the idea for Larry, it actually came about when our founder, I mentioned to you before Alp, he was the founder, his mother, she had a fall and she became unconscious. So luckily she was okay, 
Uh, but of course he was worried about her well-being and he researched the, mar the market to try to find something that would be suitable for her needs. Uh, but it quickly became obvious to him that there was nothing for this specific problem, at least nothing that she would accept. She didn't want to have cameras in her house and she didn't want to have any wearables. She didn't want to wear anything. So he teamed up with some engineers and he started working on a solution. And this is the where the idea for Larry came about after some time working with engineers to uh, perfect his ideas. So let's have a sneak peek, if I can get to the next page, of what's included in the set. It's always hard to the slides with the videos to get past. Ah. ah, there we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so you had a sneak peek of what's included in the set, and now I'll talk to you a little bit more uh, about these different pieces and their functions. So you can see here that we have the activity sensors, and these there's one for every room. Uh, we have the door sensor, uh, we have the gateway, um, we have the uh, force sensors as well, and emergency button. I'm going to go to the next slide. I'll talk a little about these each individually. So you can see on the left, these square sensors, these are the motion and humidity sensors, which we have in each room. So the set comes, the basic set comes with four of these, and there's one for each room. So you'll have one for the bathroom, the living room, uh, the kitchen, and the bedroom. And these are really easy to set up. You just put two AA batteries in each of them. There's adhesive on the back of them, and you just stick it on the wall. It's about chest level. And so they monitor movement within the room. So if you move from the bedroom to the kitchen, it detects this activity and it says, okay, this person is in the kitchen now. And then you can see how long they're in the kitchen before they've moved to another room. So at any given time, you can open the app and you can see which room they're in. And these have motion, but they also have, the one in the bathroom also has a humidity detector. And this is important for understanding how long the person uh, spends in the shower or the bath as well. And then in the middle, you have the force sensor. And there's two of these that come with the set. One goes underneath one of the legs of the bed. And one goes underneath the leg of the sofa or the chair that the person usually sits in. And so that just tells when the individual uh, is in bed, how long they're in bed or sitting on the sofa. Uh, so it can keep track of that activity. And we are working on updates, hopefully in the next year, that the bed sensor is going to be a bit different. The, our engineers are working on a bed sensor, which is just flat, and it's going to go underneath the sheet, and it's hopefully going to be able to monitor the heart rate and the breath rate. So I'm excited for when that one comes out. I think that that will be a really great um, update to our system. But you can see there's the felt part, the round felt part, and that's the part that goes underneath the leg. Uh, on the right, you have the door sensor, and there's two parts to that. So one would go on the door frame, one would go on the door. So every time the door opens and close, closes, it keeps track of this. And so if, if the door opens and then closes, and none of the room sensors detect the person, then uh, Larry can understand that the person has left uh, the house. All right. Hey, Larry. So, oh, sorry, let's uh, have a look at what these do together. Uh, so I'll show you a little bit of our intro video. Meet Larry. Larry lets you keep an eye on a loved one from far away. It does this through a smartphone application and smart sensors that are placed in your home. 
our sensors are easy to install and self-activate automatically when you're home alone. Once activated, our sensors will recognize your daily routine. Let's say you are not able to reach your mom who lives alone. Larry makes it easy to check on her and make sure she is okay. If she had an accident and became immobile for a long period of time or lost consciousness, Larry would send you an alert so you can get help as soon as possible. All right, so that was the video I was telling you about before that included my voice in it. Um, so as you can see, the information that's collected from the sensors, it's shared with caretakers or loved ones through our app. So this means like if I'm worried about my mom who lives alone, I can install these around the house and I can open up the app on my phone to see where she is at any given time without actually seeing her or seeing what she's doing. So without taking away that privacy. Uh, sometimes I might worry about her, but I don't have time to call and chat so I can just open up the app and see that she's in the living room or she's in the kitchen and I can see, oh, if she's been in the kitchen for five minutes, she's doing okay. And then I can continue on with my day. Uh, or if she's had a fall, I can be alerted by the app on my phone and then I can send someone over to check on her if I'm not nearby. Uh, I can also call and check uh, first. And multiple people can monitor this app for one person. Uh, so I could also give my sisters access to the app and my mother's doctor or nurse, for example. So multiple people can monitor uh, the same person's app uh, at the same time, same person system. All right. So this is a wellness tracking technology. It works with smart sensors. And you can see here this idea that it goes from the activity to the rooms and it sends that to what we call the guardian angel who is monitoring the app. All right. So this did initially start as a fall detector. I mentioned about our founder Alps mother falling, uh, but since then the fall detection has simply become one of the features of the product. It's evolved into much more than that. So it does send alarms, and we do have alarms that are sent for possible emergency situations, like a fall. Uh, it can also send an alarm for extreme bed duration. If a person is usually up at 8 a.m., but then they're in bed until 10 a.m., this could be something worrying that you might wanna know about, so you could get alerts about these kinds of uh, activities or extreme inactivity like sitting too long. You can get alerts about these uh, if this is something which you're concerned about as well. But as we continue to gather feedback about Larry, after it was initially a fall detector, we did realize that we'd be able to detect other types of changes that differed from the routine and not just falls. So the sensors, they uh, collect this information about activities, about which rooms they're in more, and they send this information about what the per where the person is and for how long, and that information is collected and shown in the app. So the monitor can look at the collected data and it can see if there are any significant changes in routine. Of course, the longer the system is set up in a house, uh, I, the more useful the data becomes because it learns the person's routine. Like, okay, this person's normally in bed from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m., you know, that learns that. And then if you see big changes from that, then these might be uh, some cause for alarm or at least something to look, look into to find out what's happening here. Uh, so we thought that some of these changes could be tied to certain health conditions because daily routines such as activity levels, sleep patterns, and bathroom usage could provide uh, valuable information for staying healthy. Uh, so our founders, they talked to doctors, they did consult with doctors who are experts in the field uh, to try to determine how they could use this information. Uh, and they decide that Larry should include reports on issues that fall outside of the routine, which gives Larry users information that they can take to their doctors. Uh, so for example, you can see here, like if the door is left open, maybe this is a risk of dementia, or maybe this is just a useful alert for someone who you already know has dementia. 
Uh, if they spend less time outdoors, perhaps there's a risk of depression. If there's changes in toilet routine, maybe there are some urological problems. But of course, uh, Larry will not tell you that any of these problems exist. It is not a doctor. It doesn't know this for sure. Uh, so it's just uh, a way to collect data about these activities. And of course, that would be up to the users of the product and the healthcare workers to analyze and determine uh, what these changes in routines could mean uh, based on the information provided and talking with the individual about a checkup. You know, perhaps less time spent outdoors just means there's bad weather going on, uh, or maybe the changes in toilet routine are just like they started drinking more water because they're trying to be healthier. Of course, you can talk with the individual and you can find out what these uh, different changes could be about. All right, so you can see here a little bit, Larry, in a nutshell, uh, about the different kinds of reports, alarms, and red flags that are included. So these are some of the reports, indoor activity levels, time spent indoors, outdoors, bathroom duration, bedtime, kitchen visits, how long they're outside could give some indication about vitamin D. Uh, and of course the red, red flags, the app won't tell you any of these things. These are just some things which we have the idea that it could help to uh, alert about. And the alarms, we have immobility, fall, if the doors open, close, left open, or if the person hasn't woken up. All right, so you may be a little bit curious uh, about how the app looks. And because daily routines such as sleep patterns, bathroom usage, and activity levels can be important indicators of how your health is changing over time, Larry can also help you stay healthy by sending you meaningful reports about your daily habits. Larry reports how these habits change over time so you or your loved one can stay ahead of certain health problems by adjusting habits or talking to a doctor if necessary. Larry can send you reports and reminders to make it easier to stay on top of these trends so that you'll be better equipped to make changes or talk to your doctor about them. A little bit more. So you may be curious now about how the app looks. And I did take some screenshots from when I had it set up in my home for a while. I tested out a little bit. Uh, so I'd like to share some of those with you. So first of all, when you sign up for the app, this would be one of the first screens that you see. And you can state if you're the guardian angel or if you're the monitored user. So this means the person whose home it is placed in also is able to see the app on their phone if they wish to. Of course, a smartphone is necessary for this. Android, Apple are both uh, possible. There's no problem with that. Uh, and as the guardian angel, I believe that you can monitor up to 100 people. So if you have the app on your phone, you can have at least like 100 homes. Uh, that you can uh, monitor. So this can be useful for home care agencies, doctors, nurses, geriatric care, care managers, uh, if you have that many clients who want to uh, use this. And the monitored user, they don't have to have the app, so, but they can. So we have so these are some of the alerts. So my cats are modeling this for you. Uh, so you can see that like the sensor installed door is open and when it's closed, uh, if the person hasn't been monitored within five minutes after the door closing, then we assume that the person left the place. So you can see that in the photo on the left, it says monitored user left place at 1.16 uh, p.m. And that notification came five minutes after the door had closed. So that's what those notifications look like. Uh, you can see the fall down uh, alert on the left. On the right, it's saying sitting detected since 9.51 PM. Please check. So this is a, a warning about extreme inactivity. So I had a little bit of fun having this set up in my home when I wasn't around and I could keep track of how long my husband was sitting on the sofa. <laughs> message him like stand up walk around he didn't 
uh, he wasn't expecting that. <laughs> and so we have had some recent updates which allow you to personalize your notifications. So you notice that I had those notifications about the door open and closed. And when I had this set up in my home, I got one of those flags on my phone every time the door opened. Uh, so of course, if you are monitoring people, you probably don't want to get a notification every time the person's open up the door for the pizza delivery or something. You're not going to want that all the time. So we do have some updates which allow you to personalize your notifications, um, especially if you're monitoring more than one person. So you won't want to get an alert every time these things happen, uh, like the door opening. But for example, if you have a client who has dementia, maybe you do want to see when the door uh, has opened. So you can, you can choose to keep that notification on or you can disable it for that person. Uh, you might want to set a maximum shower duration. If you know that the person usually takes a shorter showers and you're worried about them falling in the bathtub, then you can, be cho then you can choose to uh, be alerted if they've been in the bathroom for more than 30 minutes, for example. Or you can make that longer if you know that they just like to spend a long time in the bath or something. So here you can see that when you open the app, you can also see that the person's not at home. Uh, on the right, you can see the different icons which you can click on so that you can uh, check the collected data for each activity. So you can see, okay, sleep, you can tick on that and you can you can open up and you can see how many hours they've slept per night, how that's going, if it's changed at all. Uh, you can also see here that the app shows the last motion time. So it says like last motion time, 938, shower duration, nine minutes. So you can see how long ago they've been active. If you're worried about something having happened to them, you can look and say, oh, okay, they were active five minutes ago, they're okay and you can see how long they've been in a room. So here's some screenshots of that. We've got this person sitting for three and a half hours. So you can see that kind of thing. And here's an overview of what the data looks like. Uh, so you have days of the month on the bottom line, and then the hours is on the vertical line. And if you scroll down for each feature, you can get more detailed analysis. So here you have an overview of in-bed hours, kitchen visits, bathroom duration, and frequency. Uh, but if you scroll down, you can see more detailed information. For example, I have here a toilet routine. Uh, so as I mentioned, I did have it set up in my own home. Um, and this is, my data is quite, skewed here. It's quite a bit different. Most people they are going to have probably pretty consistent times. Uh, this Larry is ideal for people who live alone. So here we have actually two people, my partner and I, and he has very irregular working hours. So uh, our data is not the best to look at, but generally you're going to have a person who has pretty set data, and then you're going to um, know if there's been some signif significant changes. So you can see on the left, you have the toilet routine. You've got the time spent in the restroom by minutes per week. Uh, but then the second one you have per month. So you can look and you can say, OK, let's see. On the 21st, there were 74 minutes in the bathroom. And then you can scroll down further and you can see individual restroom visits. So how many times they went into the restroom at a particular time. And on the far right, you can see the nighttime visits. So this is the data that it collects. So here are some of our differentiators that we have. Um, so of course, there's no camera or microphone. Uh, it eliminates the need to wear an emergency button. Uh, it works when the user is unconscious. It detects hard falls, soft falls, and other immobility as well. Uh, it's easy to set up. There's no need to plug it in. Uh, I mentioned that there's just two AA batteries that are needed for each sensor, and those are meant to work for two years. Uh, it does cover the whole house, and it can connect to telehealth or non-medical care agencies. And I think the next slide I have an unboxing, yes. 
Okay, so I mentioned I have it set up in my own home and I did this little unboxing video. So I showed you the parts, but I just wanna share this quickly so that you can get an idea of like when you open this box, um, what comes in it. Normally there are four sensors. You'll see I do have more in here because you can add more sensors if you have more rooms or larger rooms that you need more sensors for. But this can give you an idea of what's inside of it. So let's check. Up and inside here, we have all the motion and humidity sensors. So these will go in each room as well as kitchen and bathroom, and they track how much time I spend in each room and where I am without any cameras or microphones. And this is the gateway power supply. And let's see what's underneath. Oh, and also these sensors, they come with adhesive on the back so that you can stick them onto the walls and install them very easily. We have two force sensors. These are for underneath the bed and the couch. So it tracks how much time you spend sleeping or sitting on the couch. We've got the door sensor, which tracks when the door is open, if the door is left open, and when you leave the house and when you return to the house. Here we have the gateway and the antenna. There is an emergency push button in case that is needed. And there's also some extra adhesive for the sensors in case you need more of that. So now I am really excited to install Larry in my house. I install the app and see how it all works. Um, I do want to mention, I think I forgot to mention this earlier about the emergency button. So we do have an emergency button, but that's not the sole way of understanding if there's been a fall. So that was added in later just as more of a, a backup or some people felt like, you know, it's good to have an emergency button just in case. But the, the actual fall detection, which we have in our system, it's based on whether or not the person has been detected by our motion sensors. So if a person, we know they haven't left the house, the door hasn't opened and closed, uh, they were in the bathroom and then the kitchen, but then there's about 15 minutes or so of no activity, then it will think, okay, this person isn't around, maybe they've fallen on the floor. Um, so this is where the fall detection comes from. And the emergency button is more of like a backup or one you can put someplace like in the bathroom, for example, if you're worried about the person falling there so you can have a more immediate uh, fall detection. All right, so um, just so you know, also we are a startup company. So we are still in our very early days and we're working with some agencies and caregivers on new pilot programs at the moment. Uh, our idea for now is to partner with caregivers who would like to offer this as a service or a product for their clients. Uh, in the future, we will hopefully offer directly to families also who are not uh, working through a caregiver. Um, so this all depends, of course, on where we find the best fit and the best market for Larry um, and how our partner caregivers would like to offer it to their clients is entirely up to them and what works best for them and what works best for their clients. Uh, so it could be something which a caregiver just suggests to the families uh, and they don't personally monitor it. So you could offer it to the children of, you know, the son or daughter of someone and say, okay, this is something you can get for your mother or your father and you can monitor it yourself. Uh, or it could be something which is offered as an additional service if you'd like to provide it as such. Uh, so for example, a caretaker can set the app up on their phone and keep track of changes as well as family if they want and keep track of changes the data and alerts, and you can set your own monthly fee for this service on top of the monthly subscription fee. Uh, of course, that is something which probably is a big question for most people about what the fees themselves are. So I'll go ahead and show you that here. Uh, all right, so this is what we already is for the product is the main package is $3.96 a month, uh, sorry, $3.96 for the device itself. And then there's a monthly subscription fee for the app of $10 a month. 
So what this includes, it includes the four motion sensors. You've got one for the bedroom, one for the living room, kitchen, and bathroom. Uh, and of course, you can get extra ones if needed. Uh, you've got two force sensors, one for the couch and the bed, one door sensor, one gateway. So this would cover uh, like a one bedroom unit, like an apartment or something, but you can add additional ones. So if you need a, a door sensor for the back door, garage door, if you have additional rooms, which you want to cover, uh, you can get those as well. And so that is the fee. Uh, like the $10 a month, for example, this would be the fee that goes to Larry, but if the caretaker decides they want to offer this as a service that they can um, charge an additional fee and anything above this would be yours to keep for the services that you provide to your customer. And also we are very fortunate to have our very talented engineers as co-founders of the company and they're constantly working on improvements. I mentioned they are working on this new uh, force sensor for the bed, which hopefully will come out soon. And we are open to suggestions uh, and improvements for the future. You know, we hope to make this product better and better with time. Uh, so of course this all depends on what is needed by the clients. What, what the what the people want you know so uh for example if there's a significant uh, need to have a sensor on the refrigerator door as well this could be a new feature that we could explore uh for the future so i'm sure that we'll have some new updates and improvements in the future that will help people to age in place safely so i think that about covers the information which i wanted to share with you um of course, if you have any questions for me now, I'll do my best to answer them. If there's anything too technical I'm not sure about, I can always get, like, uh, get in touch with the engineers and, and follow up with you on that. And here you can see that you can find us on Facebook. You can find uh, Larry on LinkedIn. You can find myself on LinkedIn. Uh, our website I have here, it's meetlarry.io. You can see the full video uh, on there. I showed you parts of it. You can see the full one and more information about the product on the website and a contact and you can see my content contact information there as well. I've got my email address, uh, my phone number, and of course, as I mentioned, I am on LinkedIn. So you can always find me there. So I'm open to any questions if anyone has any. Go ahead and pose your questions to Elaine if you've got one. Yeah, Alina, go ahead. Okay, hey. there was a, oh, yeah, sorry. Hi, Elaine, how are you? Good, how are you? Actually, we're connected in LinkedIn, by the way. Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> so my question is, you show the box with all the devices. So uh, is the person supposed to install it by themselves? It's a, it's a simple, Thing easy, friendly? Yes, yeah, you don't need to hire anyone to come out and do it. You can do it, the caretaker can do it. It's, um, you know, it's the, just about anyone can. It's very easy. So the gateway, it just needs an outlet and internet, internet is uh, needed for it. So you just plug it into both of those. And then the sensors, you just make sure that the batteries are in it and you put it up on the wall and they'll be about chest level because they monitor movement from out and above, but not below. So you want it at about chest level. The adhesive comes with it and there's an arrow on the sensor to show you which way goes up. So you'll just put it there. And of course, if you're not sure about which positions to put it in, you can always contact us and you know, I could do a Zoom call with the person to help them set it up live, but it's it's quite easy to set up on your own. The same, hmm. And the same goes like with the, to download the application. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, you just download those two things together. I'm not, I'm not tech savvy at all. So I would be the perfect person to be asking all these like, oh my God, nice, but I don't know how to use it. I understand. I'm not either. I'm not very tech savvy, but it's quite easy. Once you have, also, I think the most time consuming part was putting all the batteries. I had to open up the backs and put in the batteries. And that was the most time consuming part. But there's, uh, there will be a code for your device when you have the code that once you upload 
the um, or download the app onto your phone, you enter there and it will have a place where it asks for the code. So you'll use the code that you're given from your device and you'll be able to, um, to yeah, it will connect by that. It will recognize, yeah. okay, these are the sensors that goes with this one. And then you, there's a few simple questions that you have to answer when you're setting up the device, uh, setting up the app. So it's very easy. And if anyone wasn't sure, I'm sure, you know, just call over a neighbor or call me on, on Zoom, call me on the okay. phone and we can walk you through it. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other questions? I have one for you, Elaine. Is it transportable? Yeah. If someone moves to a different place, can they take everything with them? Yes. Yeah. Uh, of course, you might have to make sure that the rooms are all the same. You know, do you need extra sensors and that kind of thing? But yeah. And if you had too many, so for example, if you move to a smaller place and you needed one less, well, then you just take the batteries out of the sensor that you don't need and and you don't put it. Uh, if it needed to change from one person to another, you'd probably just want to contact us so that we could erase the data from the previous person. And then it would like refresh, you know, like to reboot the system. Mm -hmm. And anytime that the person is like, well, you know, I don't want this on right now or something, you can just unplug the gateway from the wall and it will just pause. It won't collect any data. And the next time you plug it back in, everything will just look the it same. Won't lose data either then. Yeah, exactly. The information will still be there, probably just for the, if you have it off for a few days, I guess it would probably just show like zero minutes for everything for those days, I suppose. So, yeah. All yeah. Right. Marjorie, do you have a question? Yeah, so um, if you were to install it in a uh, home where they don't have an internet connect connection per se, would, they, would it work on Wi-Fi? Or do you have to have like an internet um, address? Uh, the gateway, the gateway itself does need an internet connection. That is something I was talking to one of the engineers once about that because I had actually spoken with someone a while ago who was in uh, Mississippi, I believe, and she was talking about like, well, what if there's a hurricane and there's no internet connection or this kind of thing? And, and so I, I spoke with one of the engineers about that and he said that it's a possibility for the future for them to get it on 5G, in which case apparently you wouldn't need an internet connection for that. I don't know, I'm, I'm not an expert on what 5G all means, but that was what he explained it to, to me as. So that's a possibility for the future. And also it's a possibility that if we did have an issue with a lot of people who can't, um, who can't, uh, or if they have power out outages, it's a possibility that we could put like a backup uh, battery um, on onto the gateway. But we don't have that now. But those are possibilities for the future. So hopefully, we'll be coming out all the time with new new improvements that can make it work more in more situations and for more people. Great, thank you, Elaine. Yeah, thank you. I think it's great that your your company is so receptive to new ideas and that you're constantly <laughs> that's that's good. That's good for, for a startup. That's particularly good. Uh, any other questions uh, for Elaine? Anything about the topic? And you do have a website that they can go to and get information. I did have mm -hmm. a couple of questions in the chat about that. Yeah, I do. There's the question. Yeah, that's electricity is out issues is a big one. Ah, yeah, in Florida. Yeah, I'm sure. So hopefully that's something that we can um, get sorted for the future. Of course, right now, basically what means is that when the electricity is out, basically you can't turn on the app and see where the person is. But once electricity is back on, it will just pick right back up, up where it left out. Uh, where it left off. So you want to go really back up here, uh, Elaine, there was somebody that wanted uh, information on purchasing. If you want to reach out to them directly, uh, that was uh, the. Yeah, I see right that. Right yeah. So again, you, you can email me. Um, oh, sorry. I need this. We lost something there. Um, uh, oh, okay. Sorry. I'm having trouble with the. Um... That's all right. That's all right. I'm not used to doing this on my laptop. I usually do this on my desktop and it's more friendly, but let me just uh, write my email address here again. 
So you can always email me if you have a contact information, I can contact you and get in touch with you. If you can, if anyone wants to, you can share that in the chat and I can send you um, information and of course answer any questions later that you would like and as I mentioned we are right now we're in the piloting phase and hopefully in the next few months we'll have uh, plenty of devices ready and feedback from our pilot and it'll be ready for um, general sales in the public so yeah well, appreciate uh, your sharing with us today and for you all attending and uh, we're going to close this and if you want to stick around and talk to Elaine directly you may uh, this concludes our program for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, everyone, for joining.